Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for his church in the air, and then with his church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Welcome, everyone, to another LHB Last Days Update with Chris and Lewis. And today we're going to be starting our new series, Our Heavenly Inheritance, the, the blessings that are soon to come to the saints of the Most High God. But before we begin, Brother Lewis, why don't you say hello to the LHB viewers? I'd like to welcome everyone back, and um, this is a blessing to us. I uh, saw some of the comments. Uh, I saw some of the numbers that Brother Chris sent me, and it, it's amazing what God is doing. And, and we have to remember that it's not us. It, God is doing this. We're, we're just a vessel. We just, you know, he uses us to bless us, but this is what God is doing nowadays. Hey, man. And, you know, guys, uh, you know, we want every single one of you and your families and your lost loved ones in heaven, you know, uh, with us. I mean, the time is short. Now, if you guys are new to our channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. That way, every time we upload a video, you guys are notified. And also hit the like and share buttons because that's how we circulate around YouTube. You know, the YouTube algorithms, that's what they read. And and so that's how we have to, to spread our channels and not just our channel, guy, but all Christian, biblical Christian channels that mm. are spreading the word of God. We've got to support each other as the body of Christ. Okay, Brother Lewis, today is our heavenly inheritance. This is a subject that you and I love to talk about. Yes. I mean, we talk about this, how many years now? I forgot, like uh, 250,000 years? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, th this is, um, I think I, I started at Lowe's uh, uh, June of 2016. You know, no, no, it was, uh, it was it was before that, man. Before had, well, that? I, th I think it was 2015. I think you missed 15, it by a year. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, because you know my memory. Um, it's yeah, not, it's not glorified yet. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. My 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 hard drive is going soft. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, just don't glitch out now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I mean, we've been talking about this since, yeah, since we met yeah. in 2015, uh, both of us working at Lowe's. And um, it's like every single time we talk on the promises of God and the inheritance mm. coming to us, it, it's like we heard it for the first time again. It just yes. brings joy to us, right? Uh, yes, and, and, and there's so much in the Word of God about it that... <clears throat> you know, you have a list, I have a list, and there's a, a lot of things that were left out because we can only use, you know, so much during this time that we have. But um, it, it's amazing how much uh, it talks about our inheritance because God wants us to know what's coming for us. Yeah, it's like the hors d'oeuvres before the big meal. Mm -hmm. Yes. This this is the appetizer, uh, you know, the glimpse mm -hmm. of what we can understand on this side of heaven. And mm -hmm. man, I'm telling you, it gets you it gets you excited. You have to, when you see these promises that we're going to show you or some of them. Um if the hairs on your arms don't stand up, then you you need to check for a pulse because yeah. what what God has in store is more than exciting, okay? You know, one of Satan's lies is saying that heaven's going to be boring. You're going to be sitting on a cloud, playing a harp yeah. with wings and a hail over your head, and you're going to yeah. sit by yourself just saying hallelujah mm. all day long and not doing anything. <laughs> but is that what the Bible says, brother? Uh, no, and it's, it's hard for a human being to comprehend an eternity of always being busy doing the Lord's work and seeing things that you cannot even imagine, you know, the, the whole universe has been opened up to us uh, when we're in that, when we're in heaven. Amen. And not to mention the endless fellowship. You'll never be alone yeah. again. Yeah. You know, uh, work is going to be pleasurable and joyful. There's going to be no more fatigue of body, no more stress, no more bad days. Like, you know, there's going to be no such thing as uh, no question like, how was your day today? Well, you're going to know <laughs> how the day was because it's going to be good every single day. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it's like, man, I had a headache today. You know, get rid of that. That's no, no, no more headaches, yeah. no more no more glasses, no more mm -hmm. pimples on the face, no more fatigue, no mm -hmm. more weakness, nothing but good and perfectness in the uh, in the uh, power of God, right? 
Yes, no, no, no more alarm clocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no more doctor's are, visit. <laughs> <laughs> alarm clocks are uh, evil inventions, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So the first scripture that I uh, we have here uh, is uh, Galatians chapter four, uh, verses one to seven. And today we're just going to want to get an introductory, uh, uh, you know, thing about the inheritance and how, what's going to happen and the promises that God has for us concerning that. So if you have Galatians chapter four, verses one to seven, go ahead and read me right, buddy. And the word says, now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he be Lord of all. But it is under tutors and governors until the time appointed to the, of the Father. Even so, we, when we were children, we were in bondage on the, under the element of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore thou art no more, more a servant, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. All right. Now, I want to focus especially on that la uh, verses uh, 6 and 7. Now, when mm. the Bible talks about sons, because you are sons, it also means sons and daughters. It just means Correct. children of God. So women are not left out here. It's both men and women, sons and daughters. But it, it, it's interesting because it says here in verse 6, because you are sons— God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. This is why we know we are children of God, because we are saved, and the spirit of God dwells in each believer. He is literally our father, okay? And uh, because he is our father, we are going to be joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Basically, everything that Christ inherits, because we are technically uh, the brothers of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. because we are also sons of God through Christ, we are going to inherit what he, he inherits, right? Uh, correct. Uh, and, and the word tells us that, you know, Jesus says, the Father gave me everything. You know, the Father gave him the universe. Uh, and, and we are going to share that with him. So we're going to have what Jesus have, has. We're going to have what the Father has. We, we'll have everything. Um, and, and here it says, you know, we... This is, everyone knows this, and we cry in Abba, Father. Abba is like saying Daddy or Pop. You know, it's like we have that kind of relationship. It's not a, uh, a, 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 a an authoritative father. You know, it's always there. No, it is a, it is your daddy. It's the, 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 the one that loves you, the one that wants you to come to him when you need something. It's that kind of a relationship. Yeah, and, and and you know it's hard for us sometimes to understand that because you know mm. down here you know parents aren't perfect and you we you know fathers don't always represent properly the love of God mm. and, and because we're sinners, but God is holy, He's just, He is perfect, and He loves perfectly, and we can't fathom that right now. It's like you know when we sin. Uh, we have the tendency of trying to hide from God or run away from God because we're ashamed. But we yes. shouldn't run away. We should run towards because he is there willing and ready to forgive and to, to lift you back up on your feet, dust you off, and help you overcome that sin, right? Correct. And, and, and that's what we have to understand about sin, that even to us Christians— you know, we, we, we don't want to sin. We're ashamed of it. And, and and we know that we have disobeyed the Father. And, and that affects us, you know, and, and we because we don't want to disobey Him. Uh, we we want to be in perfect harmony with Him, which we are. But it's a human feeling. And, and like you said, God wants us to know that whenever we do sin, it's like, come to me. You know, I, I, I know what you did. I know what you're going through. Um, I can heal you. Right, and we got to remember. Uh, <laughs> speaking of sin, God already knows when we're going to sin before we do. So you're not catching mm -hmm. him off guard, and it's not you're not you're not fooling him. You're not. He's not in heaven saying, "Oh, I can't believe they did this. I thought they were doing so good, and look what happened. They yeah. just ruined it. Back to square one." No, no, no. The Father already knows every action mm -hmm. we will take, every choice we will make, every failure 
we will make yeah. before we do. Okay, so mm. we we shouldn't run away. We should run towards him because he is Abba, Father, <clears throat> and that's one. And one of the inheritances that we're gonna get is the is the fact that our sin nature will be totally obliterated. Right? Uh, yes. There, there's. Uh, we are going to be holy. I mean, there is. It's like there's no bad thoughts, uh, no desire to do anything uh, bad, uh, to sin. All that will be will be taken from us. Um, a glorified body like His, uh, and so there, there there will be no sin. Man, I, I tell you, just uh, just thinking on some of that, yes. this gets me uh, joyous because I can't. You know, all we know as fallen human beings, as Christians. Is that struggle, that daily struggle that we all have, the spirit versus the flesh. All yes. we know is this. All we know is mm. this. Every single waking day, a Christian is in that battle against the flesh every single day. And, you know, the Bible says God has made it that way. That way we don't do what the flesh wants, right? That one is contrary to the other, right? So uh, the, str the, the struggle is actually good, right? Uh, it, it is. We we don't see it that way, and and one of the reasons that we get so much desire for Jesus to call His church is so we don't have to be in this struggle. So we don't have to keep this. What we think we're disappointing God, we're not, because Jesus took all of that to the cross. Amen. Uh, and and He's letting us know you don't have to worry. I w I will not remember your sins. You know. Um, so we, we need to keep that in mind. Uh, but we're humans. Um, and again, we, we desire that day when he when we hear his voice. Uh, and I believe, I believe that yeah. day is going to be soon, brother. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So we got Romans chapter 8, verses 16 to 23, brother. When you get there, go ahead and tell us what the Word of God says. Okay. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our own spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have first fruits of the spirits, even ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for our adoption to wit the redemption of our body. All right. All right. This, we're going to have to unpack this because this, it, it, this says a lot. Okay. So verse 16, it says the spirit itself. And by the way, you know, uh, the, the, the more correct translation is himself because yes. the spirit, the spirit is not a force. So, you know, a lot of people, mm -hmm. that's just the old King James way they translated it, but it, it, yeah. it's himself and other translations. Okay. The spirit himself. Be and it's not herself, it's him, okay? Just let's, let's get yeah. that clear. <laughs> Beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. So that goes backs up that backs up what we just finished saying that we are uh, uh children of God through Christ Jesus. We call him Abba Father. Okay. Now here mm -hmm. it is, verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God the Father, and joint heirs yes. with Christ. Now this goes to what you said, that everything that the Lord Jesus Christ inherits, we will inherit. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you can't put yourself on the same level as Jesus Christ. We're not doing it. Christ is doing it. He's elevating us to his level uh, as, as as his brethren. Matter of fact, in Revelation, if you guys look at our Revelation series, go back in the archives, check it out, Journey Through the Apocalypse. Christ, one of his promises to us is that just like he sits down in, next to his father's throne, mm -hmm. we will also sit down next to him on his throne. Now, that's sitting next to the Trinity, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. And it's, uh, like I said, when, when you talk about, you know, you sit at, uh, at the right hand of the Father, that means that you and the Father are one, okay? And we will be one with the Father in heaven. 
and everything that he has, and this is what it's telling us, we will also have. We will inherit. We're sons. Your son and daughter, our sons and daughters will inherit what we have here when we pass away. Well, in heaven, we will inherit everything, except here we pass away. There, we're talking about eternity. Right. And, and just to clarify, we will not become God. No. That's not what we're saying. That that you know, a lot of people want to you know jump that line and say, "Hey, we're going to be divine." No, no, we're not going to be divine. We're adopted children. We're going to inherit uh, what the Lord has given to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ is going to share that inheritance with His brethren, those saved saints. It's just that simple. We're still mm -hmm. going to be human beings, okay, albeit more powerful human beings, glorified human beings, but we're not going to be divine. Only God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are divine, right? Uh, correct. Uh, the, God is, is eternal, okay? We are immortal. It, it, it means, you know, we, we, our souls are never going to die, we either in heaven or in hell, um, but the soul can be destroyed. And, and, and we know that Jesus said that, you know, why fear that which can kill the body, but fear that that can kill the soul. So we are immortal. We're not eternal. God right. is eternal. And, and, and when you say destroy, when the Bible says destroyed, it doesn't mean obliteration out of existence. Right. It just means a continual state of being destroyed. That means forever mm. being tormented in the lake of fire. And by the way, eternal means having no beginning and no end, no end. Whereas, whereas immortal means you had a beginning, but you have no end. So there's a, there's a big difference there between mm -hmm. eternal and immortal, and I'm glad you pointed that out because a lot of people, uh, they tend to mix it up, saying, hey, we're eternal. No, we're not. We're immortal. Mm -hmm. Angels are not eternal. They're immortal. They immortal. had a, yeah. a point in time where they were created. Okay, so that makes them immortal. Now, God is the only one that is eternal. Now, if we go to verse, let's see here. Okay, then in, 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 continue in verse 18, it says this. No, in verse 17 again, it says, If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So basically, the suffering that we're, 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 we're experiencing now, on planet earth you know uh paul says the sufferings of this present age is not worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed in us yeah. we suffer <laughs> here and, and and we suffer in many ways it's not just oh we suffer pain about physical pain we suffer mm. when we see sin we suffer when we see the the unrighteous seem to succeed in everything and yes. and their and the laws that they pass right uh yes uh, correct and and we talk about this all the time, um, the things that we see that affect us and it hurts us because it hurts the Father. Um, we talk about sometimes that Christians become sort of like, you know, that doesn't bother me, but it should bother you. It bothers you because it bothers God. So, you, you know, we, we, we suffer and, and we see what God sees sometimes and, and it's got to hurt. And, and it's got to bother you. And and we do suffer in, in that way. And in some cases, you should be righteously angry. Yes. Um, if, you, if, if you see, uh, you know, a law saying abortion is legal, that should get you mm -hmm. angry. If you see uh, someone saying homosexual marriage is now legal, that should get you angry. Yes. Because this is rebellion against God. And by the way, if you guys haven't check out our video on what we did last well last week on Pride Month, uh, we covered that whole uh, you know section of homosexuality and all that, and what people what what the Bible has to say about it. And uh, we didn't mince any words on that. Okay, um, when we see these kind of sins and and we're surrounded by it, we suffer, right? Yes. Yes, it has to affect it. We, we talk about this all the time and because we see it at work. Okay? Oh, yeah. We see it all the oh, time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it's actually thrown in our faces. They flaunt it, you know, and and, and you, you have to stay quiet because we have to be wise. Okay, but it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't bother us. The, the, our, our spirit, uh, it, it does something to our spirit. Yeah, it, it's um, contrary to God, man. And, mm. um, you know, we have his Holy Spirit living in us. And so, you know, uh, that we're going to feel what he feels, it, it, you know, yes. it, that's just the way it is. Okay. All right. So the next verse, it says in verse 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present 
uh, time are not worthy. I just and I just said this are not yeah. worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Okay, it's not gonna it's not gonna compare to the goodness that's coming our way, the glory that shall be revealed. And you mentioned that, and we'll go more into the glorified body next week. But yeah, the glorified body is going to be one of the many uh, great inheritances, right? Uh, yes, our, our, our glorified bodies will have no limits. Okay, um, and I've said it before. You know, it's like. You know, we, we, we talk about Superman, uh, I mean, the, the hero of all heroes, uh, Invincible. Um, he would be jealous of our glorified body. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. We're not going to be, uh, what's that thing? We're not going to have any weaknesses like kryptonite. No kryptonite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's always funny to me. You know, you got Superman, yeah, yeah. this, 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 this all-powerful guy, and he could be taken down by a green rock. I, it's, yeah. some, you know, somebody <laughs> wasn't thinking this thing through. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Our glorified body, we're not going to be like that. Uh, you know, Superman is going to be looking like a little, uh, you know, uh, ant yeah. compared to yes. what the glorified child of God is going to be able to do. Matter of fact, you know, we're going to be so powerful that we're going to be elevated above the angels, aren't we? Uh, yes, and, and, and the word tells us. Uh, and the angels that uh, we are going to meet in heaven uh, don't have a problem with that. Okay, the ones that had a problem with that, okay, starting with Lucifer and uh, the other uh, fallen angels, you know, that was their problem. That why, and, and we're going to read this later on uh, in Hebrews. Um, and, you know, it's like they're, they're jealous and they're angry because fragile cr creatures like ourselves, uh, God looked at, uh, looked at us above everything. We are the crown of his creation. Right. And here's the thing. You know, I, I, I always had a feeling uh, that uh, jealousy did play a role in Satan's mm. hatred, hatred for uh, those created in the image of God. Um, you know, it, it, uh, someone with that kind of ego cannot mm. stand to serve uh, a creature that was made mm. after him. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, there's no mm. way I'm going to serve these mud people. I mean, what are you, what are you kidding? Mm. You know, look at them, they, you know, and uh, I, I have a feeling that's going to be, that's going to play into the fact that the saints will one day judge angels as it says in Corinthians, yes. right? Yes. Yes. Uh, we're above them. Uh, Hebrews, you know, when it starts out, uh, it, it explains that to us because Back in the Old Testament, it talks about the angel of the Lord, and there was a time in, um, that they worship angels, that, you know, Hebrews and Jews worship angels because not realizing that when it talks about the angel of the, of the Lord, it, they were talking about Jesus Christ, not, right. not the archangel Michael like some religious believe. Right. Yeah when, yeah, when the Bible talks about the angel of the Lord, it's talking about, in some cases— the Lord yeah. Jesus Christ, right? So it, technically, it's God they're worshiping, not not yes. not not a not a lesser being, not a lesser right. angel or something like that, mm -hmm. right? And by the mm -hmm. way, angel simply means messenger, messenger. So yes. uh, get get the image of the halo and the feathery <laughs> wings out of your mind, okay? Yeah, that's that's Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> yes, think of the mailman. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It says in verse, um, oh, okay, verse 19, I, I love this, for mm. the earnest expectation of the creature or the creation mm. waiteth, waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. Why? For the creature, the creation, was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him, God, who hath subjected the same in hope. So God, who has cursed the uh, earth because of man's sin, mm. has also reserved the same creation in hope. And it says, because the creature, the creation itself, also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Think about this. The creation that's subject to, to, to thorns and thistles and to deserts and to droughts and to famines and to pestilence, that will be delivered when the sons of God get glorified and return to planet Earth, right? Uh, yes, that, and God says, you know, I make everything new. Everything will be new. Uh, and so whatever is going on, we, we, we read, you know, we're going to read about how you know, it groans, you know, it's like we also groan, okay, that, that would be taken away because everything will be new um, when when we come into the presence of God, become his children, and we are in a new earth and a new heaven. 
And what you just said is the next verse, actually. It says here in verse 22, mm. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Well, this is what we call birth pains. Mm. Yeah. And it says, and not only they, not only does the creation groan, right. but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. That's us. That's all saved mm. people. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So we're waiting for the, the, the we're groaning right now in these weak bodies. We, we're, yeah. we're, we're, hating, we're hating life down here. We're mm. hating this current age. We see all the sin. We, relationships stink. Uh, friendships stink. Everything stinks out there. It, it, everything's rotten, right? So we're waiting for our, us to get glorified so we can be free from this bondage, right? Uh, yes, this is 90% of our conversations when, when we speak <laughs> of, of this, and, and we look forward to it. And, and it's funny because, you know, um, when, when you end the program, you say, look up because our re redemption is near. And, and this is what he's talking about, the redemption of our body. That's right. You know, like, yes, it's like we will no longer be subjected to this uh, body that, um, in my this case, eats too much. Death. <laughs> <laughs> in your case, eats too much, huh? Yeah. Well, hey, that, that's in my case too, man. I mean, yeah. but I, I guess I should yeah. plead the fifth on that. I don't. <laughs> 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 but, um, you know, listen, man, there's going to be no more sicknesses, no more disease, no more uh, tears of sorrow, no no more pain, no more mm -hmm. having to work out to stay in shape. You're going to be in shape all the time. OK. Yeah. And, and, and again, you know, I, we don't want to get too much into it because we're going to go into detail in the glorified body next week. God willing. Um, but, yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, all right. Let, let's let's end with this one in Psalms 84. Verse 11. We'll just end with this one here. And then next week we'll pick up in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, Psalms 84, verse 11. I don't know if you have that there with I you. Do. Okay, yeah. go ahead and read, read that, brother. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. All right, right there. You know, a lot of people ask, you know, is, is the Lord going to, am I going to see my, my pet that died, you know, years ago? Is he going to give my pet back to me? And, you know, or, or is my, uh, you know, favorite thing going to be there? My favorite animal, my favorite, you know, whatever activity, whatever. And it's, look, look, everything is going to be there. It's just not, it's just going to be pure. It, it, mm. The Bible says no good thing will the Lord withhold from them that love him. So, you, you know, it, is your pet a good thing? The Bible says, you know, a righteous man, uh, uh, you know, uh, looks after his beast, takes care of his beast, mm. his animals. When he created animals, they were very good. So you're yeah. telling me that the scripture says no good thing will he withhold from you. And some people say, no, you're not going to get your animals back. I don't believe that. I believe that even the distinct dinosaurs are going to be brought back to the millennium uh, and uh, when heaven and earth become one at the end of the millennium. What are your thoughts? Well, Animals are part of creation, and he created them for our pleasure. Um, uh, and during the millennium, when it talks about the, uh, the, the, the child would play with the snake, okay, animals are for our pleasure, okay, and it will return to that. Um, it's not what it is today. So everything that we want, everything that we desire to do, okay, uh, God will give us. And you know what? We'll we'll probably do that on uh, part three of the series when we we go into the millennium, uh, yes. because that's a whole. That's right there. Uh, if that doesn't get you excited, uh, I don't know. Something's wrong with you, man. You know, check your pulse again. <laughs> but um, okay. Uh, so we're we're at the end of the program, brother Lewis. You got people watching as always. Want to give the gospel. So, what would you say to someone who's asking the question, "What must I do to be saved?" You, you know, we we have to realize that, and what we've been talking about, we're sinners. We are always going to come up short of the glory of God. Um, uh, but, but there is a hope in Jesus Christ. The other day I was watching a program, and, and you know, it's, it's like movies where something happens and the hero comes. And then at the end of the program I'm watching, and, and you get that good feeling. You know, it's like, oh, everything is great. So in Jesus, it won't be that good feeling for a moment. It'll be a good feeling for all eternity. But we have to come to him. We have to humble ourselves and realize that we need him, okay, between us and the Father um, who cannot, we, sin cannot stand in, the, in, in front of the Father. So we need Jesus for that. 
but we can only do that if we humble ourselves and we realize we are sinners and we invite him into our lives. That's right. And you got to listen, there's no magic prayer to say there's no walking up on your knees to an altar you know altar calls are not biblical in my mm -hmm. opinion they're not bi biblical you could get saved in your bedroom your bathroom at work in your car wherever you you could call on the name of the lord anywhere you are just do it in truth come before him and don't lie don't sit there and say i'm not a, i'm not a bad person i'm not that bad you know i sin but get the butt out of the way you're a sinner you're guilty of hell you're guilty of his judgment you're guilty of his wrath that's how you come. You come just as you are, and you acknowledge mm. that Christ is the only Savior. And right there, you have his promise that all who call upon the name of the Lord will, not might, will be saved, okay? All right, my friend. So next week, we're going to touch on, uh, God willing, the uh, glorified body. And then following that, we'll uh, get into the millennium. But until next time, my friends, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha. God bless.